Welcome to the Brad and Taylor Show. Today we have Ann Dalton. You're listening to the Brad and Taylor Show, a podcast that inspires entrepreneurs to pursue their passions. We're sitting down with some of the best to learn how they got started and some lessons they learned along the way. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you guys? We're good. We're doing good. We're doing good. Well, uh, let's get this started. Tell us a little bit about you. Like, what do you do? So I am a newly turned realtor. I used to be a teacher up until this last school year. Um, I taught for four years. My first year I taught third grade. Um, and then after that I switched to fourth. So it was kind of cool. My first year I taught third and then I moved up with my third graders to fourth grade oh, that nice. first year. And then I just continued to teach fourth grade for a couple more years. And then uh, this last year I decided to go into real estate. So that's where I have kind of landed. So um, we'll talk more about that, I'm sure. But when I um, when I decided last summer to go into real estate, I decided that this was going to be my last year of teaching. And so I taught up until the very end, until June, I think it was like June 10th. And then since then, I've basically just been doing real estate all summer long and it's been a lot of fun. So. That's awesome. So when you were younger, you probably wanted to be a teacher. So you went to school for teaching. I'm guessing. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, how, how did you go from teaching to real estate? Like what, when, what made that, that decision? So I always did want to be a teacher. When I was younger, um, I had three siblings that were all younger than me and I was the oldest. And so I just naturally kind of gravitated toward that. And then when I was in ninth grade, I decided for sure I wanted to be a teacher. Um, and so I went into college for that. Um, I attended Eastern Michigan University. And while well, I did like a, a community college near where I'm from, I'm from Ludington, Michigan. Oh, nice. And then so I did the community college for a little while. And then I transferred to Eastern and finished out my teaching school there. And then um, from that point, I, you know, I did my student teaching around this area, I became a teacher. And the reason why I ended up switching over to real estate is because of a lot of reasons. But one of the main things is the, you know, the teacher overload is like such a, if you talk to any teacher, they'll tell you that they work much and they don't get paid enough. And it's just, there's so much that goes into it that you don't think about. You know, I got into teaching for all of the utopian ideas of I'm going to change the world and I'm going to make a big difference in all these kids lives. And and while all of that was definitely true, it was just so much more than what, you know, I had bargained for and for not enough pay. And I was giving away all of my free time. You know, I was giving up my family time and not having free time to do anything. I was, you know, spending my nights and weekends grading papers and lesson planning and and then struggling to get the bills paid. It just was not, it wasn't what I was, you know, what I had gotten into it for. So... Last summer, uh, I think in July, I had been following, you guys know Dave Ramsey? Yeah. yeah. I, I had been following one of the Dave Ramsey Facebook groups, and somebody in there posted a thing that was like a fill-in-the-blank post. She said, um, I used to be a teacher, and now I'm a fill-in-the-blank. And everybody was commenting, you know, their, their things. They used to be a teacher, and now they're a whatever. And so I was reading through that caught my eye because of all the reasons I had just mentioned. And so I was looking through this post and somebody had said, I used to be a teacher and now I'm a realtor and I work half as much and I make twice as much. And that caught my eye, of course. So I started thinking about it because, you know, like anybody, I, I love HGTV and all of that stuff. So, you know, I was thinking like, I could do that. That could be a, a fun uh, career. So I started looking into it, um, doing some research and decided ultimately that I was going to take my shot and just go for it. So I purchased the online schooling last summer. It was August. I purchased it. And then I, I knew it was going to be a crazy school year because of COVID. So I gave myself a little grace period. I was like, I'm not going to start this schooling right away. I, I have to see what the school year is all about first, and then we'll go from there. So I started school I gave myself a little time. I didn't start the schooling for real estate until October. Um, I think it was like October 5th. And then I finished by December, just doing a little bit here and there at night. And then I, um, I finished the schooling in December. I took the test and passed on the first try. And then January 5th is when I was officially 
nice. um, officially licensed. And so ever since then I've been licensed, but of course I was still teaching until June. So it was definitely, <laughs> it was a challenge. I had some like idea in my head of like, I'm going to be this rock star, like teacher, realtor, and just do both. And it was definitely not the case. It was, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's it's for sure. hard going into it almost like part time when you have a full time career that takes all of your energy as it is. So I definitely understand yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to get out of teaching anyways, is that it was all consuming. You have no free time already. So yeah. to try to fit in another whole career on top of that was just nearly impossible. So I tried not to beat myself up about it too much and just, you know, I spent that time wisely just taking in as much information as I could. I think it actually worked out for the best because I had this like idea in my head, like I said, of I'm going to just do it all and I, I'm going to sell my first house before school is out and that didn't happen. And, but what, what did happen was I spent all those months, you know, January to June listening to podcasts, um, taking classes through EXP, they offer over so many, they offer, I think it's like over 50 hours a week of live training. And then they have tons of other things too. Um, so I just, I went to classes and listened to podcasts and all of that and just read books and took in as much information as I could because real estate school does not teach you how to be a realtor. They just teach you like the laws around it basically and the logistics. So that was helpful to just like, it was almost like I was in my own little like schooling while I was mm -hmm. still finishing so how long did it take you to get your first transaction then so you didn't you didn't get it during the school year that's okay you were already re really busy at that point so wh when did you get it was it a couple months after school or how did that process work for you that first transaction yeah so I had um a few renters that I was working with mm -hmm. actually my first client that I had I started working with in um February almost as soon as I was um, licensed. So my really good friend, her name is Tabitha. She's from uh, the same school that I worked at. She worked there as well. Well, once she learned that I was a realtor, you know, I was telling everybody at school that I'm a realtor now. And so once she learned that she came to my classroom one day and said, Hey, can you help me find a house? And we were already good friends. She worked in my classroom for a while, the previous couple of years. So I was like, of course, let's do it. You know, I don't know what I'm doing, but let's go for it. <laughs> so um, we had started looking for her in February, um, but we didn't find anything that she got accepted anyways. We put in lots of offers, but they all got rejected. The market is crazy right now, but we did finally get her an offer accepted, I think in June or July. Okay. And then so right she just school. closed. It takes a while because the type of a loan that she has is FHA. And so it was, it took longer than like a regular loan. So she, uh, she just closed August 30th. So that was very recent, but so that took a while. She wasn't actually my first transaction, but she was my first person that I was working with. Um, and that was probably the one I was most excited about because she was my good friend and my first client. Yeah. But I had a couple of other transactions that came first in July. I had a couple of renters that I got them into a lease. And so that was my first two transactions. I had two different renters that I got in and then I had another buyer that I had right before Taft excuse me, right before Tabitha. Um, it was very random and crazy how this all worked out. I had run an open house for somebody. Actually, I think you guys had her on your podcast, Amanda Richardson. Yeah. She's on my team. She had a listing that she needed an open house for. So I did it for her. Um, it was super, super busy and awesome. Uh, very successful open house. Lots of people came through. And one of the people that came through was this guy who had been, he's a cash buyer and he had been wanting to purchase, but he didn't have a real estate agent and he was just kind of putting in offers on his own, not knowing how everything works. And he, you know, kept missing the deadline or kept missing a, a form or whatever it may be. So he came through and asked me if I would write him an offer. And so of course I did. And because he was a cash buyer, it went very quickly. And so it was like, um, I wrote the offer. It was accepted the next day later we're closing. It was insane. And it was to the, to this day, that was my biggest commission check so far. So that was exciting and very strange. So I'm like doing as many open houses as I can now yeah. <laughs> because of that. <laughs> yeah. You never know who you're going to run into. You could run yeah, into another it's crazy how it works out. Yeah. It really, you just never know. Yep. That's awesome. So over the last year, 
What do you think the worst property is that you've walked through? So <laughs> I haven't seen anything quite as bad as like some of my peers. I've heard some really awful like terror stories. I don't have anything like that, but I have so far, I have two that stick out in my mind. The very first showing I ever went on um, was the house wasn't bad at all. That wasn't it. Um, the house was fine. It was just like a, a nice little ranch, couple of bedrooms, bathroom. There was a fenced in yard and a garage, but the lady was there. The seller was there. And that's not supposed to be the case, first of all. And then she had all of her pets there and she had quite a few. It was like five cats and I think two little dogs. Wow. So they were just like roaming all around. And of course, you know, the seller was there. So as soon as we walked into the property, she wanted to tell us everything about it. Mm -hmm. yep. So we got stuck like talking to her about this. And then, you know, the showing took way too long. And, and then we went to look in one of the bedrooms and there was literal dog poop on the floor. <laughs> That like she just awkward, didn't clean up it? or she, maybe she didn't know like the dog pooped right before we came in I don't know right but that was interesting and then this other one I saw um this one wasn't a showing it was just a preview it was before I like had anybody to go do showings with so I was just kind of viewing properties on my own to educate myself on the market and I saw this house and it wouldn't have been so bad but I think it was like vacant for a long time and it was just it was, it was nasty. Um, it looked like, I don't know, it looked almost like it had been vandalized or something. Like somebody had tried to do some remodeling, like the cabinets were new, but there was all this gunk like all over the, on the top of the stove. I don't even know what it was, but the floor was gross. <sighs> and then um, there was like a door that went down to the basement and I peeked in there and it was just me. And like the property was kind of creepy too. So like, I wasn't really, I was like kind of sketched out. I made door as soon as I got in there <laughs> and then as like I po poked my head into the basement and it looked like a literal dungeon like I was too scared to go down there so I didn't wow. <laughs> oh, man. so those are the two that stick out in my mind but I'm yeah. sure they're I'm sure I'm gonna see way worse I've heard awful stories from other people <laughs> yeah well, at least no one was in that house you got the creepy vibes from it but you didn't go in the basement yeah. so yeah that's good. <laughs> right. I know. I feel like that was one of those houses where like you literally, I had just had like awful vibes from it. Like, I feel like whatever happened there was bad. Like some bad stuff happened. <laughs> oh man. And you went by yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. I probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> no, it's going to happen crazy. though. Oh. Um, over the next couple of months, finishing out this year and then going into the next year, what kind of goals do you want to accomplish? I'm sure you have a lot on your plate that you want to get done. Yeah, so many goals. So first of all, like school just started. So that's really weird that school's starting and I'm not there. And mm -hmm. I'm just like doing my own thing now. And it's kind of terrifying, not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I but uh, I have a lot of goals um, and I do have a really good team on my side. So that's helpful. Um, I wrote down some of my goals because I have so many, but in the next year, so gearing up for 2022, I want to reach for 20 or more homes sold or 20 or more transactions. So that's one goal that I have. I have no idea how many transactions is going to be this year. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but next year, I got big goals. And then I actually just brought my first new agent onto the team. Nice. She she came through my like lead generation uh, program that we have called KV Core. And so that was really interesting because mostly we don't get agents coming through there. Mostly yeah. we get people looking for homes. And so yep. when she came through as an agent, I was like, wait a second. And then, so it turned out she was responding to an ad that the leader of my team had posted. And so she came through on that and I got, got a hold of her and talked to her and she ended up going with our team, which was really exciting. So she's, yeah. she's my first agent, even though like I'm kind of a newer agent as well. So we're kind of learning together, but that's another way that EXP, you can earn a lot of money by bringing new agents onto your team. If they become good, you know, pro producing agents, mm -hmm. then they give you kind of revenue share from that. And so it's kind of just like passive income if you have people on your team. Yeah. So my goal for next year is to bring 10 new people onto the team. Um, I have a lot of debt from student loans that I would like to pay off as well as like some other like vehicle loan debt, things like that. Mm -hmm. I would like to save, um, go on more vacations. We typically go on one vacation, one like real vacation a year. And it's always like 
we just had come back from that vacation. We went to the Upper Peninsula for a week. We usually do that, but I'd like to do more. There is um, a big event happening, a Brent Gove event for EXP that's happening in Cabo in March nice. that everybody on my team is talking about. And every time we have a meeting, they're like, who's going to Cabo? So it's expensive, but I really want to go. So I'm going to make it happen. So that's a big goal that I have. So that's basically it just for right now anyways. But yeah, that's exciting though. You got a big year planned ahead of you and the Cabo trip, that would be fun. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and it's for like a whole week. So I'm excited. I'll find a way to make it happen. Yeah. That's awesome. Are there conferences there when you go? So you guys can like learn as you're vacationing? Yeah. So my team, a lot of, well, a few people from my team, they just went to this um, Tony Robbins event in Dallas. So it's kind of like that. It's like a pump it up type of an event. Like okay. it's a lot mindset. Um, it's around mindset a lot and just kind of gearing you up to do big things with your business. So, I mean, I've never been to one personally. I've just seen like the little clips that my people on my team have posted from when they've gone, but it seems like super inspirational and everybody comes back like hyped up and like we just had a team meeting last week on, or not last week, the week before on Wednesday. And when we were at the office, everybody that was from, had went to the Dallas Tony Robbins event, they came back just like pumped up, telling us everything about it and giving us these little snippets, little quotes that they had written down that were so inspirational and um, talking about how important it is to prioritize going to Cabo in March because it's the same sort of like event where mm -hmm. it'll be like that. So I'm excited. Yeah. Yes. That's really exciting. You'll have to touch base with us and let us know how it went. Yeah, for sure. Because you're going to go. You set That's that awesome. goal yes. and you're going to go. <laughs> yeah. I told my team I was going. I was like very on the fence until they all came back from Dallas and then started talking all this like craziness. And I was like, okay, I'm pumped. I'm going. Yeah. So I said, I yep. said, I'm going to go. So you have my word that I said it now here too. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You're already halfway there. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> right. Right. That's awesome. What kind of, uh, what's your favorite book you've read that, uh, has helped you along the way? Oh, that's so hard. I, I love reading and I, at the same time, like don't prioritize enough for it. Like that's a big goal I have as well is to prioritize more to read. Um, but I've read a few, I wrote a few down and I have a lot more on my list that <laughs> I want to read. So the few I have written down that I read recently, kind of over the summer are Giftology by John Rulin. Oh yeah. Uh, the Secret by Rhonda Byrne. I just finished that one. Actually, so The Secret, I've had that book for a really long time. I think my husband got it from somebody and he gave it to me randomly. And then I said, I'll read it. And then I just it sat on my bookshelf. And then Lee on my team said, um, you know, we were having a chat and he was like pumping me up and he's like, you really need to read the book, The Secret. And I was like, funny story. It's on my bookshelf. I'll go read that right now. <laughs> So I did. And it was really good. It's all about like the law of attraction and, you know, positive thinking and bringing what you want into your life. And so I kind of, I actually read that on vacation. It was a really good, easy, quick, motivational one. And then the other one I read over the summer was called Raving Fans by Ken Blanchard. Have you oh, yeah. guys heard of that one? Yep. Yeah. That's a really good one too. Um, just that. So Raving Fans and Giftology feel like go hand in hand. And I forget which one but one of them, I think Giftology mentions raving fans within yeah, it. I think it does. Yeah. And they're both just really good, I think, business mindset books to get you geared thinking about treating your customers right and making sure that you're providing the best service possible. And I really think about that when I'm working with like my renters because a lot of people, you know, you don't make as much money off of renters for sure. So a lot of people will just kind of like avoid that but I've been getting a lot of renter referrals and being new starting out I like don't want to say no to them because oh, yeah. a lot of them are referred to me by people that I really care about and so mm -hmm. they refer them to me because they know that I'm just getting started and all of that so I think about that too when when I'm working with them like I always make sure to get them a closing gift you know just like if they were a buyer because it's a big deal and you know they're moving into a place just like anybody else they're probably going to be a buyer later on down the road, yep. you know, and they're going to remember me because I, I took good care of them. So yeah, I, th I think those things are really important to remember. And then on my list, I have a really long list. You guys have probably heard a bunch <laughs> of these. Um, 
this isn't all of them, but I just wrote down a few on my bookshelf that I like want to read next. Never Split the Difference is one. I didn't write down any of the authors of these, but one is called Never Split the Difference. Um, another is The Cell, Give and Take, Think and Grow Rich, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, and The Conversion Code, and Jab, 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 Right Hook. So those are next on my list. I like it. Nice. Those are awesome. I like it. It's always of those. hard to choose which one I'm going to go with next. Yeah. I have to like sit there and think about it for at least 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's funny. How can people get a hold of you? Uh, I'm on Facebook, Instagram. So on Facebook, I'm Ann Dalton. Instagram, Dalton.Ann. My email is Ann Dalton Real Estate at gmail.com. And if you email me, my phone number is in my signature as well. Sweet. That's awesome. Hey, thanks for coming on and sharing your story with us today. Yeah, absolutely. I enjoyed being with you guys today. Thank you for inviting me on. Yep. Are these working? All right. There we go. Oh, there we go. I think they're working. Should we tell them? Oh, uh, mine keeps falling. It doesn't what, like my voice. What do we got to tell them? Subscribe. Subscribe? What do we, do we got to point out? Hey, I think there's a subscription button like. It might be, it might be there. It might be right there too. Somewhere. Somewhere. Find it. It's red. Yeah. And red. it's blue. It's green. I don't really know. It's, it's a color. This mic isn't even attached. Did you plug these in? Well, I guess uh I wonder if they can hear us. Yeah. I wonder if they hear us. Well, we should probably tell them if, if they can hear us. We should probably tell them also give us a five-star review for listening to on Apple. That's cool. Five, five stars, review. guys. Share it with everybody they can think of. We won't but, take four stars. I mean... I don't even think these are on. I mean, this no, is, I don't think this is working. This is not working.